Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here. And it's my great joy to welcome you to this service of worship here at The Vine, an online campus of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. We know that God is going to meet us in this time today, and so we are so glad that you've taken time out of your day to worship with us. We'd love the chance to get to connect with you. So if you would take a moment and either click the link that's in this video description or scan the QR code that will show up on your screen in a few moments. There you can let us know that you're here and let us know how we can be praying for you. Now I invite you to take a big deep breath and let's prepare our hearts for worship. Please join me now in our opening congregational prayer. The words will be on your screen. Let's pray now together. Gracious God, give to us the mind of Christ, who loved God and loved his neighbor, who healed the sick, fed the hungry, and prayed for the forgiveness of those who rejected him. May we follow his path in this life and the life to come. Amen. I'm Pastor David, one of your pastors here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church, your minister of visitation, and it's my privilege to be able to lead us in prayer this morning. Now, as I pray, I'm going to be pausing at a certain point, and you'll know when that is, to give you the opportunity to speak the names of persons that you would like to remember in prayer today. Let us pray. Lord God, you are the creator of the universe, of all there is, seen and unseen. You created the sun, the moon, the stars. You cast the earth into orbit around the sun. You're the God of all creation. You are the God of the storms and the sunrise the God of the wind and the rain, and also the calm. Even as Jesus came walking across the water to his disciples, and he still the waves and calmed the storms. So we invite you today to come to us, Lord Jesus. Calm the tempests that are raging in our lives as we deal with the day-to-day -day challenges of life. Lord, when you extend your hand, give us the courage, the will, the strength 
to extend our hand into your hand with full confidence that you will lead us through the stormy seas, the stormy times of life. Lord, as we look around this world, there's so many troubled areas and problems from Gaza to Ukraine to uh, East Africa and many other places around the world. We pray, O oh Lord, for your peace. And for us, as we deal with the stresses and strains of daily life, with disappointments, with challenges, with bad news, with death, help us, O oh Lord. And now, O oh Lord, we have this opportunity to lift up before you the names of persons we would like to remember in prayer today by simply speaking their names. Hear our prayers, O Lord. Be merciful to us. You promised to never forsake us or leave us. You promised us your peace which surpasses all understanding. The Bible tells us you are the God who heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wound. We claim these promises for ourselves and all those near and dear to us. Through Christ our Lord we pray. And as Jesus taught His disciples to pray and still teaches us today, so now we also pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For the next moment, let's reflect upon our place in God's kingdom and especially upon our stewardship and how that is an expression of our place in the kingdom of God. Uh, there are several ways that you can worship God with your giving through our church. Uh, one is that you can write a check and send through the U.S. mail. Uh, you can also go on the church website and uh, there's a place there uh, where you can also give to support the ministries of the church. It's important that we worship God through giving because God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Eric, Eric, I'm late for the children's sermon. Oh, you big dummy. Hey, guys, I'm Pastor David. It's time for the children's message. Uh, if you've got children nearby who aren't already watching the uh, video or youth, call them over. Now's a good time because I've got something to share. Well, uh, I'm almost out of breath. I almost didn't make it. He wanted to go the other way. I don't know why. I've, I've been yelling at him for like 10 minutes. No, back to, the, back to the church, back to the church. Well, we're finally here now. So anyway, this is Eric, uh, my friend. He, he doesn't say a whole lot. But you know, when I first uh, came on, I bet you were thinking, whoa, wait a minute. And you know, that happens a lot in life. Things are not what they first seem to be. And we have to take a double take and you know, shake our head and look again and try to figure it out. What is going on there? Well, you, some of you probably uh, did that just a moment ago when I came on the screen. Well, our scripture lesson today is Jesus walking on the water. Now, he came walking on the water in the middle of the night, in the middle of a storm, 
Don't you think the disciples took a double take and a triple take? I mean, that was the last thing they expected to see. And yet there he was. I'm sure some of them were thinking, he's standing on rocks. And some others were thinking, you must be really shallow right there. But neither one of those things were, were true. He actually came walking out on the water to the disciples. And in just a few moments, Pastor Doug is going to be sharing that scripture with us. And he's going to explain how that applies to our lives today and impacts our lives today. But just remember that, you know, sometimes things are not what they first appear. And so, yeah, it's all right to take a double take or a triple take so that you know for sure what's going on. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the children and youth that are watching this video. Lord, help us to be wise. Help us to always put our faith and trust in you. And when we see something that, you know, at first we just can't quite believe, help us, Lord, just to stand back and say, wait a minute, God might be up to something. Thank you that you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Eric. Eric? Eric! Yeah, okay. Yeah, bye. Hello, grace and peace to you. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name's Doug Lane. I'm senior pastor here at Wrightsville United Methodist. Thanks for taking time to join us on The Vine. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 14, beginning in verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Well, this is the Word of God. For us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, Lord, we come before you, coming into our little sanctuary. Wherever we are, we pray for safety and protection from the storms of life. And we ask that you will hear our prayer and you will pull us out. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, it's amazing how fast we can get things nowadays. I could go to Walmart, Target, Harris Teeter, or some other store and have almost anything I wanted within 30 minutes. If it's something more specific, Amazon could have it to me by tomorrow. If I want something to eat, I can microwave most things for less than a minute and it will be ready to eat. Now, it may not be as healthy as something that takes a little longer, but I'm just saying I could do that if I wanted to. And if I wanted to go to California, I could be there this afternoon. That's a trip that used to take weeks when my great-grandparents were born. And information, my goodness, that's now at our fingertips. When I was growing up, if I wanted to find out something, I'd have to go down to the public library and head over to the card catalog. Any of y'all remember that? There, I would look up a subject and then go find a book on that subject that I hoped would have information on what I wanted to know. And then I had to take hours reading through the book to get the answer I needed. It took a long time. Nowadays... I get all bent out of shape when my internet browser doesn't show me the results of a subject search within five seconds. I love the convenience of having a computer in my pocket that gives me answers right away. I want things fast. As Jimmy John says, freaky fast. But there are some things in life 
that have always happened fast. For instance, today's gospel reading begins with an important word, immediately. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. Immediately after what? Well, the story takes place immediately after the feeding of the 5,000. What a day for Jesus and the disciples. After everyone ate their fill and the leftovers were collected, which amounted to 12 baskets full, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. No time to celebrate the miracle or to relax and enjoy what just happened. Immediately they're sent across to the Sea of Galilee. I point this out because I think that this word is an important part of the story and because it reminds us of how life actually works. A lot of the big changes in our lives, good or bad, happen immediately. It can be a good thing when you learn that you got into your first choice for college or when you learn that you're pregnant or when a family member calls you with exciting news. These are life-changing events often and even though they're positive, they happen immediately. And immediately our life is changed. And of course, there can also be unwelcome events that happen immediately, like an illness or an accident or the death of a loved one. Many of you were here the day I got the call that my dad died. It was a Sunday morning between services that I found out. He had not been sick, so it came as quite a shock. Immediately, my heart sank and I needed help. In the case of the disciples in this gospel reading, the change they experienced was at the command of Jesus. But that doesn't make it any easier. They're asked to leave Jesus right after he's performed this incredible miracle. And when they do, they find themselves, almost immediately, on a boat being battered by the waves, far from land, with the wind against them. We've all been there. We've all been caught in one of life's storms, being battered by circumstances beyond our control, far from the safety of what we know, with seemingly everything against us. We all get our turn in this particular boat, usually when we least expect it. None of us, not one of us, gets through this life completely unbattered and unscathed. And often these storms come at us immediately, without warning. And when they do, it's worth remembering this story and very much remembering the two other times that the word immediately shows up in the story, both of which teach us something very helpful for our Christian life. For the next time that the word immediately occurs is when Jesus is walking on the water toward his disciples. It's a famous part of this story that even people who are not familiar with the Bible have heard, the story of Jesus walking on the water. Of course, many of those people may not know the reason for Jesus walking on the water. And the reason is simple. Jesus simply wanted to be with the disciples. Remember, he sent them on ahead. But they got caught in this terrifying storm, and Jesus doesn't want them to be alone, so he walks out toward them. It's a simple but important detail that this story teaches us. That whenever we are caught in one of life's storms, we can trust that we are not alone. Jesus is with us. We're never alone in that boat. God's Son, our Lord and Savior, is always with us. That's His promise. Remember the very last thing that He ever tells His disciples in Matthew 28? He says, And lo, I am with you always. He may not immediately calm every storm, but He's with us in the midst of every storm every single time. He is with us in the storm. He is with us in the boat. When in our life we feel battered by the waves and far from the safety of land, with the winds blowing strongly against us, that's when we can be assured that Jesus is with us. The disciples, though, are not immediately comforted by seeing Jesus walking on the water. In fact, they're scared to death, thinking they've seen a ghost. And so they cry out in fear. And that's exactly when the word immediately shows up for the second time. The disciples cry out in fear, and immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. I think there's an important teaching here about prayer. 
When life's storms hit, we can cry out to the Lord and the Lord will immediately answer that prayer. Being afraid doesn't mean we don't have faith. There's nothing wrong with being afraid. Our Lord wants to hear from us, in fact, when we're afraid. Cry out in fear when life's storm hits, but make it a prayer. Cry out to the Lord and He will answer your prayer immediately. Take heart, Jesus says, it is I. Do not be afraid. Yet that's not the end of our story. Because now enters our favorite disciple, Peter. In response to seeing Jesus walk on the water, Peter makes a very strange request. He says, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus is like, okay, and simply says, come. So Peter gets out of the boat and starts walking on the water toward Jesus. And Peter seems to be doing this really well until he notices the storm. Then he becomes frightened and begins to sink. Now the storm was going on the whole time. And the water was there the whole time. So was Jesus. So what changed in this story? Peter's faith. What else is there? It's the only thing that changed. He began to doubt. He took his eyes off of Jesus. He looked at the storm all around him, at the wind above him and the water below him. And he became frightened and started to sink. Perhaps you've had those moments too. I know I have. Times when I've taken my eyes off of Jesus, looked around at the storms in my life and started to doubt. And if you're like me, remember then what happens next in our story because we get one more use of the word immediately. Peter, in a panic, cries out, Lord, save me. And Jesus does. When? You guessed it. Immediately. He immediately reaches out his hand and catches Peter. No rebuke, no condemnation, no punishment. He doesn't even roll his eyes. He simply catches Peter the very moment he cries out to Jesus. This is important because sometimes when we're in one of those storms and forget our faith, we can feel a little guilty. And our guilt can sometimes keep us from crying out to Jesus for help. Jesus wants us to cry out for help whenever we need it, regardless of how faithful or unfaithful we've been lately. And he will immediately catch us. Remember the story of the prodigal son? Jesus doesn't withhold his love because we've been away for a long time or because we've been caught up in some sin. As soon as we want help, he responds immediately. Now, after he catches us, he might very well confront us about our lack of faith, just as he does with Peter, but not before. It's only after he catches Peter that he says to him, you of little faith, why did you ever doubt? By the way, I find it interesting that whenever Jesus describes someone as having little faith, he's almost always talking about his followers. He isn't challenging people without faith to have more. He's challenging those of us with faith. To have more. Jesus doesn't accuse non believers of having little faith. We probably shouldn't either. But I suspect most of you listening today are believers. And so I can ask, how's your faith going? If you were to get a checkup today, how would your faith measure up? But before you answer, remember two things. First, Jesus loves humility. He says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who aren't sure that they have a whole lot of faith. And second, remember that Jesus told those same disciples that all they needed was faith the size of a mustard seed. So if you feel as though your faith is rather small these days, take heart. Do not be afraid. Jesus is with you. And if he's with you, faith the size of a mustard seed is more than plenty. So if your boat's a little battered right now, and let's face it, whose isn't, take heart. If you feel far away from the safety of land, do not be afraid. And if you've taken your eyes off of Jesus, open up those same eyes of faith and see Jesus with you in the midst of the storm. Because he is. He always is. Jesus is with you on the boat, in the storm, and when you feel like you might be drowning. Jesus is there to offer a hand. 
Now, today's gospel is really a simple story, but one that I think we all need to hear because it reminds us of something so simple and so important. That Jesus is with us in the midst of every storm. We can prepare for some of those storms. They don't all hit immediately. Some are like hurricanes that we can track for days on end before they hit with all their force. But there are so many other storms that we didn't see coming. And they hit us immediately. And when they do, it's good to remember this story. It's good to remember that whenever we cry out in fear to the Lord, He immediately answers our prayers. And when we take our eyes off of Jesus and become overwhelmed by what is happening in our lives, it's once again to, good to remember that Jesus will always be there to catch us. It's no wonder that when all was said and done, those in the boat worshiped Jesus, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. That's why we worship, isn't it? To take a moment in the midst of our journey through life, to gather in this little boat of faith, and to worship the one who promises to be with us in every single storm. Thanks be to God. But the name of this sermon series is called Be Like Jesus. I've spent the last 15 minutes reminding you that Jesus will be with you immediately whenever you need him. But how can we be like Jesus? How can we be the body of Christ in today's world? Do we need to learn to walk on water too? No. But we can be the person who remains calm when someone else is in crisis. And we can be the person who gives encouragement to make it through the storm. And we can be the person who lends a helping hand just as soon as we learn that someone is drowning in their worries and anxieties. Yeah, even in this story, we can be like Jesus. So isn't it good to know that Jesus will be with us when we need him the most? And isn't it also good to know that Jesus will use us to come alongside him when someone else is in need? Knowing that I'm cared for, that's a sign of grace. And knowing that I can care for others, well, that helps me love my neighbor as myself. But let's not hesitate. As Christians, let us be bold enough to pray to Jesus and bold enough to act like Jesus immediately. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, we do seem surrounded by problems, these storms, and in some respect, very real physical storms like people are cleaning up from, but oftentimes it's something that's a little different, something that's happening in our health or the health of our loved one, something that's help, happening in work or with our parents or our children, our brothers or sisters friends, neighbors, right here in our community. We've all got problems. And yet, even in the midst of these problems, we know that we can cry to you and you will send a helping hand. Lord, pick us up when we're struggling. And even in the midst of our problems, may you use us to help someone else. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Know that you are cared for and that Jesus will come to you when you need him immediately. All you have to do is pray. And likewise, know that Jesus wants to use us. You, me, yeah, to help others, to love our neighbors as ourselves. And we hear that there's a problem. He wants us to act immediately. So let's go forth in faith, knowing that God is with us, here, now, and forever. Amen.